back to secular humanism. See, one of us. Oh, sorry, up. I thought you had a boyfriend. I, I didn't realize. Keep going. I didn't realize. You didn't realize? You're a liar. You're no, a I fucking liar. You're a fucking liar, and you want to fuck kids. I thought you were. Are you gay or not? I'm not. I'm not gay. But if I was gay, I would be happy to say I, just I was gay. Let him hurl the f word at me. I can hurl the f word at whoever the fuck I want, fucker. Look at this. He's not personal, but I'm it's personal. not a magic word. No, he's he's saying highly offensive things to me right now. I, oh, oh. I'm a, so where where they I'm an learn education where they, rapist where they learn. Yeah, so you don't believe in consent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, so, laugh it up. You. But Matt's position. Matt's, Matt's position. I Matt's came position. in with the secular humanist manifesto. I came in with positions that aren't Bigger just positions. my, that aren't merely my position. Oh, well, as long as multiple people hold the position, this guy's not serious, and I'm leaving. James, if you want to have fun, you Well, good know. day, sir. And I'll cover your refund, Mr. Cool. Matt. He just said he'd cover my I refund. I would cover his refund. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. No, I'm not going to dignify a debate with someone who walked in to trash talk me and be smug and all of the things that he's being right now. He's already said he will cover my expenses. You don't have anything to worry about. This debate is over. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jackass. <laughs> did you call? Did you call, did you call me a jackass, Matt? Well, you and your husband have a good day, man. Oh. <laughs> have a wonderful day, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that was fine. I mean, if you're gonna take a parting shot, I will too, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. No, your parting shot's correct. <laughs> oh man, tough, cr tough crowd, tough crowd. Much James, and thanks Andrew for being here, and all of you for showing up. Um, humanism has as its focus the betterment of humanity in this life, while Christianity has as its focus adherence to a God and the disposition of souls in an afterlife. Our best efforts in this life are, according to the Bible, like filthy rag. Our best attempts at righteousness and justice are portrayed as vile and disgusting when compared to a bumbling God constantly failing to get his creation to love and respect him while also prescribing the death penalty for nearly everything. Adultery, blasphemy, breaking the Sabbath, disobedient children, witchcraft, worshiping another God, not being a virgin on your wedding night. Which is better for society? Well, I'd say the one that has human society as its focus and isn't so intent on killing humans for not buying into a specific doctrine. Heaven and hell, if they were to exist, aren't human societies. What a god thinks is unknown and irrelevant. There's never been a secular humanist nation, either in a governmental form, which I'm not advocating for, or in a primary philosophical view of the majority of the population, which means we have to look at the ideals between these two positions. Secular humanism has been around for 90 years. In 1933, the first Secular Humanist Manifesto was published. It identified humanism as a religion with 15 points. It was updated 40 years later in 1973 with a lot more information. And then it was incredibly shortened in 2003. In addition to the manifestos, there are organizations like the Council for Secular Humanism, American Humanists, etc. In the first version of the manifesto, it's presented as a religious view where it acknowledges there's no supernatural guarantee of human value. We advocate a heightened sense of personal life and a cooperative effort to promote social well-being. The goal of humanism is a free and universal society in which people voluntarily and intelligently cooperate for the common good. In the Manifesto version 2, 40 years later, this includes a lot more information, short versions. They, they begin by saying those who sign this disclaim that they are setting forth a binding credo. This statement reaches for a vision in time that needs direction. We affirm a set of common principles that can serve as a basis for united action. This isn't a to-do list or a thou shalt or thou shalt not list. We're fine with religion's inspiration, but we're opposed to dogma and authoritarian views that place anything above human needs. Religions don't pass the test of scientific evidence. The promises of immortal salvation or eternal damnation are illusory and harmful. Ethics and moral values stem from human experience, and situational ethics stem from the human need 
and human interest. Reason and intelligence are the most effective instruments we possess. We are not advocating for the use of scientific intelligence independent of or in opposition to emotion, for we believe in the cultivation of feeling and love. Individuals are precious and their dignity is affirmed. This is important. Us, human beings, affirming the value of individuals and human beings is more powerful than a God affirming it, and it's infinitely more powerful than a human claiming a God affirms this, which is all we appear to have. The third version of the manifesto, in a nutshell, is so short, whether God exists or not, we have problems to solve. We have to do this without appeals to the supernatural entities or intervention. We must utilize the best methods at our disposal. Reason and science seem to be the primary ones to assess reality and reach conclusions. Justice, fairness, equality, and autonomy are the primary goals. This life, not a hypothetical afterlife, is what we're trying to improve. So what happens when religions control societies and governments, either legitimate or illegitimate? Well, conflicts with other societies and other governments may not have any reasoned diplomatic solution. You need only look to Gaza. But that's Islam and Judaism. Here we have Christianity as a primary and Christian nationalists. Under secular humanism, you get to be a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, gay, straight, socialist, capitalist. You just don't get to impose those necessarily on others through acts of fiat. Not necessarily true with the religions in charge of the government. Mike Johnson's the new Speaker of the House in the United States. He's homophobic as all get out. He's argued to criminalize homosexuality. Homosexualities, by the way, are U.S. citizens with specific, specific rights that he wants to take away. Moreover, he advocates for gay conversion therapy, which is unscientific and torturous because he thinks he can help them pray the gay away and the gay can be eliminated. He's not anti-gay. He just wants them to cease to exist as gay. They get to keep being human beings. He thinks there's no right to sodomy. Privacy laws don't protect everything, and he thinks that what sort of sex do you have it should be his to regulate. Sodomy, by the way, is anal or oral copulation, which I have it on good authority, heterosexual folks engage in as well. 2022, he presented what was called the Don't Say Gay Bill, outlawing any discussion of gender identity, sexual orientation, or related subjects, which was incredibly problematic, because he ignored the, the, what the experts have to say about age-appropriate content and how critical it is, especially for kids under 10, which was his target, to have correct language in order to better report on and about sexual abuse. His policy, if it had been implemented, would have made it more traumatic for kids and more difficult for them to uh, out their abusers and easier for abusers to get away with it. Happily, it failed. In 2015, he blamed abortions and the breakup of the nuclear family for school shootings. He also says the teaching of evolution is to blame for mass shootings because we've taught a whole generation of couple generations now of Americans that there's no right or wrong, that it's about survival of the fittest. And if you evolve from a primordial slime, what is that life of any sacred value? He wants student-led prayer back in school. So, Speaker, are you okay with Islamic prayers, satanic prayers, or just particular Christian prayers? He's opposed to the separation of religion and government, sometimes called the separation of church and state. He thinks that the founders only wanted to protect the church from the state and didn't want to protect the state from the church, citing the notorious lying pseudo-historian David Barton um, to support this view. He definitely seeks to impose his views on others. Now, some of you are saying, hang on, he's the Speaker of the House, he's not the Speaker of Christianity, or that's not my type of Christianity. Great. But what is your type? What's your type of Christianity like? Because there's a lot of them. How is it better? And how can we make sure that we get your better version than the one that Mike Johnson wants? He thinks his version's correct. So do you. Countless denominations without consensus. He's already got more power than my opponent has right now. So I don't know Andrew at all. I don't know what, what version of Christianity he's advocating for. I didn't bother to look him up. We literally just met and said hello as I sat down here. Is his version of Christianity better? I really hope so because it'd be hard to get a whole lot worse. But they point to the same book. They point to the same savior, the same history. Liberal and moderate Christians provide legitimacy and cover to hide the fundamentalists and to allow them to engage in Christian nationalism. Secular humanism allows you to be a Christian. 
right up until you try to impose it on others. And then you get to keep being a Christian. You just don't get to practice it in the way where you're imposing it on others. You can pray, you can go to church, you can tithe, you can worship, gather, share, discuss, convert, vote based on your values. You can vote against your own best interest. I see people doing all the time. You can teach your kids your values under secular humanism. The foundational principles of secular humanism solve conflicts with data, debate, and discussion instead of coercion, conversion, or conquest. There is no secular humanist sect and no denomination of secular humanists that's ever required someone to believe something that is not empirically verifiable, that's ever ordered the death of another person, that's ever ordered or acted to act or destroy property of any person or government, that has ever overthrown a democracy to impose a secular humanist regime, that's ever been connected with terrorist cells and activities, that's ever denied freedom of speech or expression, that's ever called for the deaths of people for criticizing secular humanism or any religious view, that has ever advocated for or inspired suicide bombers or terrorist attacks. Those things are simply not consistent in any way with the core values of secular humanism. There is no threat to Christians, Jews, Muslims, Scientologists, from secular humanism. There might be from scientific skepticism and rationality if you're not able to actually demonstrate the truth of your claim. But life, freedom, and an equitable relationship are the foundation of secular humanism. There is no list of thou shalt not or thou shalt because we recognize that nearly every attempt at such a list fails at some point as we learn more about our world and about getting better at understanding the world better, about doing better, and being better in this life. The goal of humanism is a free and universal society in which people voluntarily and intelligently cooperate for the common good. If you have an objection to that or a better goal, what is it? All right, thank you so much for your introductory statement. Uh, we're gonna hand it over to Andrew Wilson for 10 minutes. So thank you for being here, Andrew, and the floor is yours. You're welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is <clears throat> Andrew Wilson. I am the host of the one and only Crucible, the fastest growing debate channel on the internet, James. I just, just, just in case you didn't know. Appreciate that very much. Appreciate everybody being here. All of you are way too stodgy in this room. Very low energy. Just wanted to let all of you know that. Ladies and gentlemen of all pronouns, the Z's, the Zers, the Hims and Hers, I would like to thank you for tuning in today for this in exciting in-person conference on modern day debate. My name is Andrew Wilson. Um, <clears throat> there's a few ways this debate can go. The topic is Christian ethics versus secular humanism, which, which has a better foundation. The funny thing is, I already won that topic because as Matt explained to Jay Dyer, he has no justification under the skeptical belief structure to give an accounting for any meta-ethical uh, presupposition he may have. He just kind of grants himself stuff. He grants himself logic, he grants himself reason, he grants himself an entire worldview, even though he's using an unjustified starting position for it. So, I'm not honestly all that interested in doing the God Not Real Doe debate, because one, it's boring, and two, it's also really boring. It goes like this. I don't see enough evidence and remain unconvinced there's a God, then I say, but you use the theistic worldview of justification like there is a God to grant yourself logic and everything else. So instead of that, I'm just going to grant Matt's entire worldview. Two-thirds or more of, the plan of this entire planet are all operating inside of a shared delusion that they were created by a sky daddy who loves him some slavery and murderousness. He thinks it's funny to kind of cosmically f*** with people. That's his deal, kind of his whole thing. That's Matt's worldview. So now Matt's right, and the question becomes, should we let them to continue to believe in this nonsensical Stone Age madness, or do we stop them from engaging in it? My contention is, even if God isn't real at all, that people acting as though he is, is still superior to whatever nonsensical, egalitarian worldview Matt can come up with. See, Matt also just acts as though the things he believes are true. He believes, he believes, he believes, and therefore acts as though Logic is real, math is real, everything is real based on his presuppositional belief that they are real. You see, human flourishing, the cornerstone of Matt's ideology and that of secular humanism, is totally meaningless. Flourishing by whose metric? From my perspective, for instance, attempting to lie to people who claim men can be women isn't human flourishing. 
From Matt's perspective, it is. Why? Why should the collective of humanity lie and say men can get pregnant? Why should uh, they say that men can have periods? Things which are categorically and obviously false. That preserving homosexuality in society is good for human flourishing, even though they are reproductive dead ends. <laughs> and that Western society and egalitarianism is superior to those evil theist society, even though the Western nations can't even reproduce their own populations, but instead have to replace their population with foreigners from those theist nations that can reproduce. Let's start with a basic societal question recently asked of the West, who has now embraced a scientific and non-theistic approach to governing. Super basic question every kindergartner knows. If you don't believe me, go watch Kindergarten Cop. The question posed to the Western nation is, can a man be a woman? All right? To the question of if a man can be a woman, they say the answer is yes. And the way we will decree they can be a woman is by simply saying that woman now means male. Problem solved. Thank you, secular humanists. Thank you so much. Nope, not kidding. Why, you ask, would people be this over-the-top stupid? Well, it's simple. The good is the good, man. We have to do what's good for human society and human flourishing. And if you don't call these deranged lunatics something they obviously aren't, they might self-terminate, so in order to avoid that, we need to make everybody on planet Earth lie to them. This is human flourish. Just redefine shit, pretend it's true. How laughably absurd this worldview is. Matt will often say, I remain unconvinced. Well, Matt, I'm also going to use your standard. I need for you to 100% convince me beyond a shadow of a doubt that males can have babies. What's the answer going to be? No, Andrew, you big stupid. Males can't have babies, men can have babies, because we just define man to include females, dummy. Well, <clears throat> Matt, I remain unconvinced. I'd like Matt to convince me that if you are a male and you are having sex with another male, which would not be allowed in my version of a secular humanist worldview, how is it that you're not just basically having sex with a guy with a wig on? I really want to know the answer to that question. Not just me, but all rational people who aren't lunatics also want to know why it's ma'am, isn't a complete and total crock of garbage. Because I remain unconvinced that it isn't a total lie, and that these people don't just pervert the language to include their own perversions and then add human flourishing at the end. Matt has said he wouldn't make a law stopping nine-year-olds from having sex with each other. Not kidding. Now, I know this is going to sound a little bit totalitarian, but I would in fact create laws that made it a crime for a nine-year-old to have sex with their nine. I would hold the parents criminally liable for allowing this to happen in my evil authoritarian society where I don't even let nine-year-olds have sex or the parents go straight to jail for negligence. Now, I think that's better for human flourishing. I think maybe parents would be far less likely to let their nine-year-olds do that if they went to jail. Stupid me. Next, I would in my authoritarian society decree that all simulated sex acts in public were criminal offenses and would make sure that all people went to prison for the crime of indecency, which doesn't assist with human flourishing, and I'd like to know why I'm wrong. Secular humanism can basically be whatever the hell you want it to be. It doesn't really need the principle of freedom or the starting axiom of freedom and peace in order to postulate whatever it wants. It's sloganeering. They're slogans. They don't mean anything. Okay, why do nine-year-olds need to be able to have sex in order to advance humanity? Why do we need to lie about a person's sex in order to advance humanity? Why are these things necessary for human flourishing? Why are decency laws bad? Why would Christian ethics stop flourishing when the theist mandate is to reproduce, reproduce and the secular mandate is, let's just all have sex and have fun, bro? That sounds way worse for human flourishing. In fact, I would say not reproducing is the worst possible thing for human flourishing, because if there's no humans, how do you flourish? So, I guess, in essence, step one, I remain unconvinced. Step two, I need to be convinced so I am no longer unconvinced. And step three, but God not real dough doesn't matter here. I've already granted it to still demonstrate just how stupid this ideology actually is. With that, I'll yield my time and I'm happy to get into it. Hey, James, <coughs> I just sent you a message. All right, we are going to kick it into an open discussion. So uh, 50 minutes and uh, well, let's kick it. No, I don't think so. I'm not going to sit here and dignify the preparation that I went through and what people were here for. You're so indignant. 
Keep interrupting me. I, I am. Okay. You're so indignant. Would man. the moderator like to step in so that I can finish oh, what I'm oh, saying? Oh, please, Matt. Please. How dare someone have an opposing worldview? I'm not going to sit here and dignify what was supposed to be a debate about Christianity versus secular humanism, which one's better for the world. Yes. With someone who clearly showed up with an agenda that has nothing to do with that. I just like Someone who refers to trans people as deranged lunatics who will self-terminate if you dare to question them. How am I wrong, Matt? Someone, someone who misrepresents a quote from a debate where I said I wouldn't make a law about nine-year-olds having sex being legal with respect to the nine-year-olds, not that I was in any way in favor of it and that I was actually opposed to it, which I addressed during that debate. But moreover, this is not remotely an honest interaction on the front of whether or not secular humanism is valuable. Because this, when he presented his position here, has nothing to do with secular humanism. From the get-go, it's all about me. Matt thinks, Matt thinks, Matt thinks. I'm given what Matt thinks, what Matt thinks, what Matt thinks. Matt's position, it's Matt's position. I came in with the secular humanist manifesto. I came in with positions that aren't just my, that aren't merely my position. Oh, well, as long as multiple people hold the position, it this makes This guy's it valid. not serious, and I'm leaving. James, if you want a refund, you Well, good know. day, sir. And I'll cover your refund, Mr. Cool. Matt. He just said he'd cover my I refund. I would cover his refund. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. No, I'm not going to dignify a debate with someone who walked in to trash talk people and be smug, and all of the things that he's being right now. He's already said he will cover my expense. You don't have anything to worry about. This debate is over. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jackass. <laughs> did, you did, you call, did, you call, did you call me a jackass, Matt? Well, you and your husband have a good day, Matt. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> have a wonderful day, Matt. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was fine. I mean, if you're going to take a parting shot, I will too, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, my parting shot's correct. No, your parting shot's correct? <laughs> oh, man. Tough, cr tough crowd. Tough crowd. Divinity raises the humanity in Christ through theosis, and that's exactly what we experience.